Blessed that is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the heathen, that sitteth in the seat that is can't fall. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did sunrise and sundown. Him I go dear like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth fat fruit in his season. Him live never I go wither, and whatsoever him doeth shall prosper. Yea! The heathen them now, they saw them dear like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn for the judgment that the sinner man them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God, Jah, love the way of the righteous and the way of the sinner man them always and always I will perish. Let the people of the most high God say, Jah! Kadamawe, Gromabe, Tilo, eh. Where two centuries meet in the name of the Most I Jah. Ah, that's so Jaja there. If Jaja never build up your house, the builder, I go build it in vain, same way. If Jaja never watch upon your house, the watchman, I go watch it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and them is safe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jah shall deliver him from all of them. I and I give thanks, I and I give thanks, I and I give thanks. Ah, mau, so go Lisa, a down water, I was a sick player for. Ao mau so bolisa akwe 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 kaka akwe sia. This is the Blackport, aka Kuku Shodemo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rastana. In every traditional African home, there is a Blackport, and each time this Blackport sits on the fire, ingredients of so many different types, sizes, oh, colors, shapes. Aromas and flavors put aside all their differences, relocate into the black pot and be subjected to some amount of heating where they produce food. Now, this food does not even benefit the black pot, neither does it benefit the ingredients, it rather benefits us, the eaters. Yet, every time this collaborative effort between the black pot and the ingredients will continue, is the selflessness we must learn and inherit. Now, the black pot represents the continent of Africa, and the ingredients represent us. That is why we must come to interplay in order to produce this time around, not food, but development for our people, our continent, our life, land, so selflessly. Yes, development for our people, our continent, our land, and for that matter, our life and their lives and lives of generations yet to come. This is the black pot, and here we do not criticize. If we must criticize, we would only just criticize for one reason, to build and not to destroy. If we must criticize, we would only criticize to benefit our people, our continent, our land. Here we don't talk uh, personalities, we talk issues. It's an issues-based conversation. It has nothing to do with personalities. My brother, my sister, we are in the service of God and country. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo where we speak truth to power, and we are ably supported by is it, and is it simply means in spirit, in truth. Now, if you are tired of social media's negativity, nudity, nakedness, oh, maybe you are even tired of social media's violence and racism. Now, the app that is meant for you is is it. Is it means in spirit, in truth. Download this from uh, App Store and Google Play for free, no hidden cost. Hey, you can do everything positive that you do with social media, except the negative ones. Hear me now. You can go live. You can make both audio and video calls. At the same time, you can make video calls. You can upload your photos and videos and promote your own business. Get in contact with other people of like minds. Oh, share ideas and promote your brand. And this is all for free. Crystal clear in a very positive environment. Is it can be downloaded for free from App Store and Google Play. Connect with family and friends. Ah, and enjoy this new app. And it's produced by Africans. Oh my God. And this is all over. Support the African business and innovation. Yes, this is the Blackport, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And we encourage you to also subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called Black empire media black is spelled b-l-a-k-k -K. oh click on the notification button so that every time we come your way you'll be able to pick up the vibrations deep sound and clear is the black port our numbers are rolling on your screens right now pick up the numbers and do business with us we are here to do business with you so we can keep your business alive today we have a number of issues we want to look at and it's going to be deep number one what does it say? It says, Ochehine, chief with no traditional wisdom. Who is Ochehine? Who is Ochehine? 
This is Ochehene. He is the chief of Chebi. In fact, it's a very powerful kingdom. That kingdom was powerful in the days. But people like this man here called Ochehene have destroyed that kingdom. Today, only a few people respect this man here called Ochehene. You know why? I am somebody who loves traditional authority because I am a traditionalist. And when I say a traditionalist, I mean a believer in tradition. You cannot be a Pan-Africanist if you are not a traditionalist. You cannot be a Pan-Africanist if you are not a lover of the African tradition. So I love chiefs, I love kings, I love queens, and so on and so forth. But this man here is a shame to a tradition. He's called Ochehene. In fact, the president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Akufuado, is from that area called Chebi. Once a very powerful kingdom, but today desecrated by people like this man with no traditional wisdom. So that people would not say that we are just throwing around insults. Because in Ghana, when you speak your mind, they say you are insulting people. But hear me now. This man used to live in England. Then, after some time, it was his turn for him to become chief of his homeland. So he came down and he became chief. Now, when we talk about illegal mining, it came to a time it was so rife in this man's area that the president of the republic became so uncomfortable that he decided to go and speak with this man and tell him, listen, we are getting a bad name for the area, especially that I'm president. Galamse, a.k.a. illegal mining, is so rife in the area. I need you as the chief of this area to sit up and fight this Galamse. Well, he told the president that he had heard. Later, we're hearing things like, oh, this man had been installed as the king of Galamse. How? He wasn't ready to let his people stop Galamse if a university was not built in his area. He indirectly supported Galamse in one way or the other. He was not ready to fight Galamse for his own ego. As long as they make money from this Galamse thing, they are never ready to stop it. They want to eat it all. The next generation can go to hell. This is Ochehine. Today, Ochehine has gone deep into the annals of the desecration of history. As something else has happened. And I'm so ashamed. Watch this. Can you see what I see? Can you see what I see? Come here. Watch this. Police retrieved exhumed bodies kept at palace after Ofori Penyin Fie sold cemetery to investor. Are you hearing me? Let's take the headline again. Police retrieve exhumed bodies. It means bodies that have been dug from the ground. Kept at the palace and these bodies were kept at Ochehini's palace. Because the land had been sold to an investor. Mm. Run the story. It says, the Suhum District Police Command in the Eastern Region on Thursday, April 20, 2023, stormed Amanasi Chief's Palace to retrieve skeletons of exhumed human bodies kept at the palace. The bodies were exhumed from the royal cemetery in the community after it was reportedly sold to an investor by Ochihini Osajifu Amwetia Ufuripeni to be used for the construction of a fuel station. The bodies exhumed include late chiefs and royals. Two of the exhumed bodies were freshly buried. While one of the fresh corpses had been reburied, the other has been kept at the Suhum government hospital morgue. However, the Jasehini of Amanasi Abenfo Adu or Benfo Adu Ajekum, who doubles as 
acting chief of the community decided to keep the exhumed skeletons of late chiefs of the community in a room in the palace. This created an uproar in recent times among some royal family members and residents. Police invited the chief to write a statement about the incident on Thursday. Subsequently, the police CID stormed the palace to evacuate the skeletons to the morgue after minutes of back and forth with the Jasehini and some of his sub-chiefs. Opinfo Adu Ajekum, however, told Star News the cemetery has been sold to an investor. As a result, we have to exhume the bodies. So Ochehini Osajifu Amwetia Ufuripeyi himself ordered that the bodies be exhumed to enable the investor develop the land. So we held a community deba, invited some everybody, including pastors, opinion leaders, to discuss the matter. He continued that. So after exhuming the bodies, we realized we have to create a new royal cemetery to rebury skeletons of the late chiefs. We tried several times to get uh, earmarked land for that purpose, but were unsuccessful. So we decided to keep the skeletons in a room here at the palace until we get a cemetery to rebury them. We had two fresh bodies which were sent to Suhum Government Hospital, but we managed to bury one. The other body is still at the morgue. At the time of filing this story, the chief was still at the Suhum Police CID for further investigation. Dash it away. And come here. Bring the photo of the chief with no traditional wisdom. I'm so ashamed of this gangster. This guy is not a chief. Listen. I pray that this man dies before me. After all, he's older than me. I'm going to lead a group to exhume his body. We will keep it on the side of the street. Invite the wickedest dogs in the area to come and eat the corpse. That is what he has done to his ancestors. He's a greedy man. This guy is very greedy. If I were the president, I would disown this guy. Can you believe this? A cemetery that contained the body of royals and chiefs. It's not an ordinary cemetery. It's a royal cemetery. One day when he dies, he will be buried in a royal cemetery. And... They said they want a fuel station. What in Ghana we call filling station. So what happened? He sold it to an investor. Collected the money. As to what he did with the money, only God knows. Greedy people don't account to anybody. Listen. And the investor decided to go in. So members of the royal family decided to go in there and exhume the bodies of their great ancestors. Oh, what a shame. They desecrated the tombs of all the chiefs buried there, including all the royals, and carried that into a certain room, waiting for the investor to come and put up a fuel pump on the cemetery ground. And Ochini doesn't see anything wrong with it. This guy here has no traditional wisdom. Listen, cemeteries are so sacred when it comes to the African traditional religion. You don't enter into a cemetery on certain days. And even in Islam, when you are walking around a cemetery, you are supposed to be saying a prayer for the dead. The cemetery is so holy, in fact, the final resting place of man, that with Muslims, they do not even prefer that they are buried in the same cemetery as non-Muslims. That is how serious it is when it comes to cemeteries. Do we all know how many rituals happen in the cemetery? Ochihini doesn't seem to have traditional wisdom. 
All he's thinking about is a fuel filling station that will give him his cut. And he doesn't care where his ancestors go. A guy like this, is he supposed to be a chief? Yet he was the same guy who distilled a certain sub chief a few days ago for Galamse. What you have done is worse than Galamse. I'm so ashamed. And I don't know why the traditional house of chiefs or whatever it is called is quiet on this issue. This guy should be distilled. He has no respect for our ancestors. In the same vein, he has no respect for tradition because he has no traditional wisdom. This guy. My brother and my sister, you will be shocked that there will be some idiots around who are still supporting this guy because they are his, he is their chief. So they will support him, whether he's right or wrong. Until we rise above some of these mediocrities, Africa will never move forward. A thief is a thief. It doesn't matter whether it's our thief or their thief. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who perpetrates that wrong. It is still wrong. One man cannot do something and be considered as wrong doing, and another man will do the same thing and be considered as no wrongdoing. It doesn't work like that. And we have to come out and speak boldly against some of these things. But I promise you, Ochehene, I pray that you die before me. After all, you are older than me. I will lead a team that will desecrate your grave. We will wait for the bones to rot like those two corpses. We will bring them out and unleash dogs on your body. Like a wicked man. Dash him away. Next story. Next story we are looking at says, Professor Frimpong Martin advises upon Krumah tearfully. Oh my gosh. Do you know what it means to say tearfully? He's advising the man amidst tears. Who is Frimpong Martin, the professor? Come here! That's the prof, the good old prof, handsome looking. He said when he came from Germany to establish the cardiothoracic center right there in Ghana. Upon Krumah, the information minister was only six years old, just like his fourth born. And therefore, in his capacity as a father, if he may take that position, he would like to offer advice to Kojo Upon Krumah. And who is Kojo Upon Krumah? That's him. He's one of the youth. One of the, he might not be a youth, but he is one of the young men in government. A lot of people expected a lot from the gentleman here, especially those of us who worked with him in the media. But all of a sudden, he's thrown all caution to the dogs and he's following his own greedy ambition. That's what I see. Come here. That's what I see. These are people you go to battle with. Same mind. Right after they get a certain elevation, they don't seem to be singing the same song with you again. They are traitors. That's how I see them. People like that are traitors. We together were in the media fighting the same old corrupt politician. All of a sudden, he left the media and joined hands with the, I mean, politicians. We expected that he would carry some of the media spirit in there. But no. From 88 hospitals that were not built, now we are building 111 hospitals. And it was this man who carried the same message to us. Carrying government propaganda messages all over the place. Yet, when he was not in government, he would sit on radio and on TV and condemn all these things like a well-meaning patriot. So I see people like that as hypocrites. Right? Now the professor has come out to say something. And the whole thing is contained in this story. Run the story. Watch it. It says, Frimpong Watin advises K-O-N, and that's Kojo Ponkrumah, as a son, revealing more galamse in Ofwasi Ayerebi. Ofwasi Ayerebi. And you can see the photo of a man sitting down there talking to his sons. That is so reminiscent 
of what the good old professor is talking about. Run the story. He says what? The former Minister of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation, Professor Kwamina Frimpong Boateng, has responded to the Minister of Information regarding the latter's reply to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. Come here, report. Watch it. After the report was leaked, Kojo Ponkrumah left this, felt disappointed and denied the claims made in the March 19, 2021 report, describing them as false. Over the years, I had nothing but great admiration for Professor Boateng's public spirited works and as an inspirational citizen. I feel gravely offended over the false claims he has made and the hateful conclusions he has sought to exact about me precisely because of the great esteem in which I have held him. He, however, forgave the good old professor. But Professor Frimpong Watin said it was normal for Mr. Opon Nkrumah to deny the allegations. He said, very few people in such positions will own up to wrongdoings. I have good advice for you though, the respected heart surgeon stated. When I was part of the government, we were colleagues and I related to you as such. Now, I will advise you as my son, just as I do to my children. After all, you are the same age as my fourth born son. When I returned to Ghana from Germany to start the cardiothoracic project, you were just six years old as my fourth child. I will not lie to you or insult you or be harsh on you. My advice is always remember that political power is both short-lived and effervescent. In other words, transient. The chairman of the erstwhile IMCIM also revealed current activity of Galamse close to the hometown of the information minister. I don't want to believe that what the person said about your role is true. The important thing is that Chinese and their Ghanaian collaborators are engaged in illegal mining at your doorstep. He asked his former colleague to investigate it and take appropriate action. You see, Upon Krumah has been somebody that I always had respect for. I still have respect for him, even though we differ in opinions some of the time. I think that what the professor is feeling is the same way I'm feeling. A former colleague in the media, but right now, he has sold out the media and all that he does is propaganda for his party. What has Opon Krumah done to uplift the media that he was part of as information minister? What have they done? Absolutely nothing. It's from one propaganda to the other. And even during his vetting as information minister designate, lies. He owned this, which he put in the name of this person, that person. He lied blatantly. And the dirty guys who sat and vetted him, who later we are hearing, took bribes to pass recent minister designates. I am tempted to believe that these were the same dirty guys who passed him. My brother, my sister. It is sad where our parliament has reached. We thought that in a hung parliament, we would have a better parliament. We thought that the speaker of parliament, being from the opposition, would have a better parliament. But no, it is a parliament of monkeys indeed. It's sad. My brother, look at the people they are passing. People who have no clue about the ministries that they are going to head. How a kumsin on my mind. Look at what happened to the other one. Ajua Safo. Look at how this guy was so arrogant. 
when he was being interviewed, overconfident, full of lies. And these guys knew that he was lying, but they pushed him on. You see, some people see lying to be courage. They see lying to be smartness. The professor has spoken, and we all need to listen to what the professor is saying. Come here. You remember former president John Dramani Mahama said a few days ago that when you are in power, it appears to you that the power will never go. Everywhere you go, pump and pageantry, protocol. Now when the ugly face of stares at you, then reality comes to play. If you can do anything, and I mean anything, to stay in power, you would. Brian Achampong in my mind. There's nothing NDC would ever do for us to hand over power to them. Because the ugly face of power is staring back at them, telling them that it's time to step aside. The professor had said something. Bring his photo. And what did he say? He said, you are a young man. Wisdom is not only in the head of uh, old men. But the same way, if you would permit me, that I would advise my son your age. I want to sit you down and talk to you. Remember that power is transient, effervescent. Power is short-lived. Tomorrow could just be two years' time. You will be out of power and reality will start staring at your cringing brows. Be careful. It's the best thing you can ever say to people like Opon Kruma. Being in power for eight years, they believe that no, they will never get out of power. They want to break the eight so that they will continue being there because power is sweet. No wonder Elembele Mugabe the other day said, power is so sweet he will sell his own mother and buy power. Such a joker. Such a joker. Afterwards he came to tell us, oh, my mother died several years ago. I was joking. Your mother's ghost is ashamed of you. That you will play with your mother like that. Power is so sweet, you will sell your mother. Hey! Not even your goat. Not even your dog. Your mother who labored for nine solid months to bear you an unfortunate child. What a joke. And when we speak to them like this, they don't like it. They say we are disrespectful. They forget that they are utterances. In fact, are so terrible. So, upon Chroma, here we are. With all respect, I do not know if this guy ever returns to the media, how he'll be able to deal with the media again. Some of them, when they rise a little bit, every other person that they used to be with doesn't matter. And Opon Kroma is one of those. From my experience, that's what I see. That's what I see. And from what I hear from other people, <laughs> but that is them. Let them live their lives. When reality comes, like the professor is saying, we shall get to the beginning of the bridge. We shall see how we we'll cross it. The name Black Rasta. <laughs> and when we return, we got more. Hey! What you call <laughs>
This is the Black Pot, aka Coco Show Demo, where we speak truth to power. Now, you saw our quote for the day. Now, we chose that because the good old professor, Professor Abinafi Mombuatin, the respected heart surgeon, said that the information minister, Kojo Ponkrumah, is full of evil tactics. And that quote is for evil people. To God be the glory. I hope that they will all look towards Ghana properly and make it work for Ghana. Come here. Remember, we are duly supported by is it. And is it means in spirit, in truth. Listen, if you're tired of social media's negativity, the nakedness, the nudity, oh, the violence, and even the racism, then your app is is it. In spirit, in truth. It's the most positive. Listen, we have powerful algorithms, yes, powerful algorithms that sap out anything negative. You won't even see it appear. So you can trust this app. It's a very powerful app. Now you can do anything positive that social media does. Like what? You can go online and then you make messages sent. Yes, you can also make video and audio calls. At the same time, you can go live. Yes, go live. Yes, upload your videos, upload your photos, and upload your business. Oh, meet people of like minds and make sure that you connect. Connect with family and friends. This is Is It. And with Is It, you download it for free from App Store and also on a Google Play. This is Is It. And I am there. Make sure that you join me on Is It. Let us. <laughs> All right, dash it away. Our numbers are rolling on your screen. We want to do business with you. Thank you so much, Is It, for supporting us. How many more would like to support us? Our numbers are on the screen. Oh, gosh. And this is where we speak truth to power. Ghana first. In fact, Africa first. Nobody is bigger than the truth. Nobody is bigger than the truth. One lie. Next story. Watch it. Hey. Sour grapes deepen at despite media as Mac Brown exits. Hey, you know what sour grapes are? When we see grapes, we are talking about bad blood. People becoming angry because something happened. Bad blood. Sour grapes deepen at despite media as Mac Brown now, Despite Media is one of the biggest media houses we have in Ghana. And it's owned by Kwame Despite. Kwame Despite is a self-made billionaire. In fact, he's done so many businesses in the past and he still does very, very good in whatever he does. At a time when some media houses are not paying their workers, he has never been mm -mm -mm, in arrears. He pays you on time. And he makes sure that you are paid well. I respect him for that. I have never met him. Hey! I would love to meet him when the time comes. Why not? When you meet rich people, you rub off their riches. Yes? That's what it is. But! Who is Mac Brown? This is Nana Ama Mac Brown. She's an actress. An actress. That's it. And who is on the left? That is the CEO of uh, Despite Media. And we're talking about Father Dixon. Now, Father Dixon is the CEO. And so many people love him. Some people say he's a philanthropist. He's giving monies to so many different people. He's aided so many different people. I hear only positive things about him. A few negative ones, just like any other human being. Now, Father Nixon was responsible for bringing Nana Ama McBrown on TV, in fact, to host a magazine program, an entertainment show. And it became big. It was called the UTV Entertainment Review, right? It was big. People liked it. Yes, it had excesses, but they liked it. Now, after a few years of hosting the show, Nanama McBrown thought that it was time to move out. And she moved out. 
But she also had a program running there called the McBrown's Kitchen. In fact, it had been running long before she even started her entertainment show. And it's a cooking show. Celebrities come and cook. And then when they finish, they are giving some gifts from the sponsors. It's not a bad show. I was invited to be on the show. I couldn't make it. Nana decided that it was time to leave. And she left. There was a whole brouhaha. Workers at Despite Media were not happy. They called her ungrateful. Some went on radio live. Instead, wait, Father Dixon, standing by them, almost encouraging them to do more. After all, she was ungrateful. It was like she was their biggest. Now, Nana Mama Brown was picked up by another media house called Media General. The general in the media army. Bigger, probably. And when she signed to work with them, there was so much pomp and pageantry to welcome her. People came to dance at Oh, others came around. It was a whole ceremony to welcome Nana Abba Ama Mac Brown. She enjoyed it. It was nice. She spoke. She was not happy that she was being lambasted uh, by her former colleagues. And she said she had left them with God. That's what she said. I've left you to God. But today we are reading something that is about to break my heart. I decided not to talk about this issue after all. People would always leave. Media houses. I've left a number of lead media houses. A number of media houses. And I'm proud to say that there was not a single instance where I was sacked. That means every media house I worked for, they loved me. They loved my honesty. They loved my energy. And we were always friends. For one reason or the other, people would continue to move. It's not necessarily about money. I have never moved because of money. Never. Never. That be that. Watch what is happening in the news. Mark Brown and Father Dixon allegedly beefing after he stopped UTV airing Mark Brown's kitchen show. Come here. Hey, can you believe this? Remember I told you about the Mac Brown kitchen? Yes, the Mac Brown kitchen show. So she left her UTV show. But this other show was supposed to be running. She was paying for it. She had sponsors. But boom, that one too was removed without telling Mac Brown. How true is this? There is a report that Nana Ama Mac Brown and Father Dixon allegedly have a conflict after Mac Brown's kitchen show was taken off air. According to reports, Nana Ama Mac Brown's kitchen show was not aired last week when the time of the program was due. However, Nana Ama Mac Brown received no notification that her program would be taken off air. Mm. According to a report, Mac Brown phoned Father Dixon several times to find out why they refused to air her show. But Father Dixon declined her call. She proceeded to call the marketing and communication team. But again, no one responded. Mm -mm -mm. Apparently, the Mac Brown's kitchen show is not aired free of charge. It is financed by Mac Brown herself. But they still did not inform her before taking the show off. According to reports, it is a sort of a payback to Mac Brown. Because she also left UTV without an official notice. Mm. 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 Okay, you see? So this is what is called tit for that. Tit for tat. Or dog niam dog, as we say in Jamaica. Hear me now. The media house has behaved so unprofessionally. If this report is true. You know why? To who much is given, much is required. We are looking up to the big media house, despite media, to behave professionally more than we expect that professionalism from Nanama McBrown, an individual. Nanama McBrown can decide to behave unprofessionally, but despite media cannot afford to play games with unprofessionalism. So we are peeved. How would the other workers there feel? I know some workers there who wanted to leave and you clapped for them to go. Kiki Banson wanted to leave. You clapped for him to go. 
There were some other people there who wanted to leave. You clapped for them to go, Abate and the rest. You understand? So is this one more valuable than all the other ones that left without any hula balu or furori? How would the other people there feel? Did you create a monster who is now eating you up? It's very unprofessional. Now, this Mark Brown's kitchen show, did they have an official agreement? Did they sign? Now, Mark Brown says she joined UTV to host their show without any contract. By word of mouth, she had been running it. And at a point, she said that she wanted to stay back. But they brought her back again from illness to yet another illness and illness and illness. She went off and on, off and on like Ghana Dumso. Or better still, Nigeria's Nepal. Finally, she decided that, hey, I want to turn the show inside out, up and bottom. So let's sit down and discuss it. She said nobody approached her. And she felt that once she had no contract, it was time to leave. Did she have a contract with Mac Brown's Kitchen that had been running for so many years? They have to solve this amicably. You know why? Because Mac Brown has a lot of endorsements, ambassadorial endorsements, using this kitchen show. If it's taken off from one of the biggest TV networks, it might affect her. Is she going to carry it to media general? Do they have another program that is as powerful as the one on UTV? Or is this a case of sour grapes? I expected that Media General would behave more professionally. But whatever it is, we still have a lot of questions demanding answers. Did they have an official agreement to air Mark Brown's kitchen? If they did, then the courts are ready to hear this. This is the Blackport, a.k.a. Kukushunemo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we have more. Hey! Hey! <laughs> This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shodemo, and here we speak truth to power. So, Media General, despite media, there is a beautiful romance happening. Nana Mama Brown left despite media and has moved all the way to Media General. I hope and pray that despite media will sit back with her and try to understand that people cannot stay at one place forever. Forgive each other and let each other move on. Yes. Would media general have a platform big enough to host Nanama Mac Brown's show? The way despite media is handling this issue it's not the best it's not the best please sit back you have been here for so long i believe that you can handle this better i'm talking about despite media this is the black pot aka kuku Shudemo, where we speak truth to power come here next story 
Now the next story says, Gabi, Kweku Baku, complicit in Alaska Galamse destruction. Destruction is not spelled there. The E there, the second E there, remove it and put an R there. Yes. So we're talking about Gabi Asari Ochre Dakun. We are also talking about Kweku Baku. These are two big giants in Ghanaian politics. Kweku Baku's father was a minister in the days of Kwame Nkrumah. A very loyal and honest minister. When some other people were running away from Kwame Nkrumah, he stayed with Kwame Nkrumah. He was asked to even go and then buy planes for the nation, pay for planes, aircrafts. And when he went and the price had come down because of discounts, he returned the money to the state. Some other person could have pocketed that. His son is Kweku Baku. Is he as honest as his father? Is he as loyal as his father? Now he has sympathies with the NPP. Everybody knows that. Now the NPP and the CPP can never be friends. You know why? Because the UP tradition, they were the people who masked up against Kwame Nkrumah, bombed him several times, and even caused him to be removed from government. So every true CPP cannot be a friend of the NPP. Unless we just want to forget sour grapes and move on. Kweku Baku Jr. has always said that he's a CPP man. But of course, he has serious sympathies with NPP. That's not why we are talking about this issue, but it's to build the background for you to understand this romance. Gabi Asari Ochridaku is a cousin to the President of the Republic of Ghana. He has unfettered access to the President. It doesn't matter what time of the day. Probably he's the only person who can go and wake up the President and say, I have come to visit you. He has unbridled access to the President. This is Gabi Asarocho Daku. Admire him. Recently, he was fingered in the Galamse report by Professor Kwabena from Pomboate. He said Gabi had called him, trying to find out why a company known as Alaska Company Limited, and Alaska is a Canadian company doing mining in Ghana. And they were in an area destroying the land, destroying the flora and fauna with unbridled lunacy, uncontrolled madness. According to the professor, so Gabi called him to find out from him why he had asked soldiers to seize the equipment of Alaska when Alaska had all the documents required to destroy our land and destroy our flora and fauna. So he said, I am the lawyer of Alaska. One of my lawyers is dealing with him, but I am calling you. Why was Gabi calling and not one of his junior lawyers? Because he had the influence. You understand? So the professor told him, even if they have the license, they have gone beyond their license and they are misbehaving. I have asked them to have the equipment seized. Case closed. And Gabi said, thank you. And hung up. But Gabi was able to follow up on this issue. After all, the president is his uncle. And they were able to restore the equipment to Alaska. For Alaska to go back and continue destroying the land. Do you know that? The same Alaska. Destroying the area. Accounted for the death. Of Captain Mahama. Who later became Major Mahama. Do you know that? In fact. Major Mahama was sent to the area. To replace another soldier. Who had to write his exam. So he became the captain. To protect. The land. And to protect. 
Ghanaians. Alaska was in that area. It was there that Captain Mahama lost his life. So sad. So Alaska, according to the professor, was destroying the area and had gone beyond his jurisdiction. Hear me now. Watch this interesting thing. Now, how does Kweku Baku come in? Kweku Baku also called the professor, according to the professor, and told the professor, Prof, Alaska, that company, the boss is my friend. And they are saying that they want to have a meeting with you. And that you have asked them to, you know, stop mining and blah, 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 blah. Professor wrote all this in his report. In fact, making Gabi and Kwekubaku complicit. Well, Professor also said, when he did not budge, Kwekubaku went ahead to damage his reputation using his newspaper. Kwekubaku has responded. But let's look at the story. Run the story. He says, after listening to Gabi, I became sad for Ghana. From Paul Boatin hits back. Come here. Sad for Ghana indeed. Run the story. It says, former Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and in Innovation, Professor Kwabina from Paul Boatin has hit back at lawyer Gabi Asai Rochidaku over the leaked report of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. In the report, Professor Frimpong Watin, who chaired the committee, cited Mr. Asare Dakun for calling him on phone to defend a mining company destroying Ghana's vegetation. He said that saddened him most. What saddened me most was when Mr. Gabi Asari was called to defend a company that was actively destroying the environment especially the forest and river of thing in the upper pram crop of forest hmm. but the known npp lawyer replied the respected heart surgeon in an interview with accra bay city tv accusing him of having a weak understanding of his position mr ochri dakun also said mr frimpong watin reported him Reporting him to President Nana Adodankwa Akufu Adu was a non-starter because the president is a lawyer and will not just act on such verbal complaint. No, rather the president is an arrogant, selfish family and friends president. So I heard Gabi in that interview in which he said, you reported me, me to him to do what? To do what? When somebody tells you that means that the president is limbless. He cannot do anything. That's what it is. In a reply to this, Professor Frimpon Boatin pointed out that Mr. Ochri Dakun only exhibited industrial scale ignorance about mining laws and regulations. After listening to the words of Mr. Gabi Asar Ochri Dakun, I became sad for Ghana, the cardio surgeon wrote. I wondered what happened to us to get to that state where a person who is supposed to be a lawyer to a mining company exhibited such industrial scale ignorance about mining laws and regulations. Professor Frimpon Boatin reminded the renowned lawyer and entrepreneur that his client had a strong history of acting with impunity. Wow. So Frimpon Boatin told him, do you know that you're a client that you are defending? He has a history of acting with impunity he doesn't care about ghana are you aware mr ochre dakun i don't think you have retrograde amnesia that's loss of memory but i still want to refresh your memory about the destruction of the environment that has been perpetrated by your client over the years with the accompanying pictures and videos from diasu forest and upper prama Professor from Pom Boatin pointed out that per the destruction caused by Mr. Ochridakun's client, they should have been prosecuted and probably jailed by now. Yeah, but sad. Very sad. Now you call the minister to find out from the minister why he decided to seize the equipment of Alaska destroying the land. And the minister asked, ah, but 
am I supposed to be giving you information on this? Look at the headline. Watch. You know I did not operate mining information service. That's a cheek he has given to him. He's a minister. He was not supposed to give you mining information service. If you need that, you know where to go. Professor Frimpon Watin responds to Gabi Ochidako. Yet you called him because you wanted to use your influence. But come here, let me break your heart more. Now, apart from all these things happening, Kwekubaku on one side, helping out with Aleska, Gabi Ochidako helping out with Aleska. Look what Gabi Ochidako is doing again when it comes to Chinese. Watch it. Through Gabi's intervention, arrested Chinese galamseyers were released by the tax force. What an allegation. This professor was truly, 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 truly being frustrated. And the president decided to remove him because he stood his grounds. That's how dirty politics is. Run the story. He says, the former environment minister has disclosed that uh, through the intervention of the cousin of Pro President uh, Akufuado, some arrested Chinese engaged in illegal mining in the Ashanti region were released. Professor Frimpong Boateng said that many soldiers who were providing security service to your Gabi Asari Ochidaku clients company attacked the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining Tax Force team. According to him, whilst at it, they damaged the vehicle carrying journalists who were covering the IMCIM operations. I should tell you. So you see, it's a nation that is ruled by hooligans and terrorists. This is what the professor is saying. He's fighting to make sure that the land is rescued. And according to him, Gabi also had soldiers that were protecting his clients. Making money at the detriment of the nation. Are these patriots? Meanwhile, Gabi is a British citizen. He's a British citizen. He has a British passport. Today, if the nation breaks down, he will go back to England. Can you do this in England? I don't know why we are not looking at this. Maybe I may have to talk to a lawyer and then we'll take this guy to court so that we will know truly where he belongs. I don't know law. I'm not a lawyer. They are the lawyers. What is this? You have a British passport. You were born in Chelsea. At the time that you stood the chance of getting a British passport, you grabbed it. Allegedly. Then you would come and help destroy our land. The land that you are not ready to belong to. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Dash it away, man. We're going to look at the last thing and we are out of here. Watch this. Now, all these things happening about the Galamsey report. This is what the presidency says. Government rubbishes Galamsey report. Period. Look at the story. What does the story say? IMCIM report is a catalog of personal grievances and claims by Frimpong Boatin. This is the presidency saying this. It's personal. Destroying our land is personal. Having tax, attacking journalists and people who are fighting for the land is personal. Having lawyers call, trying to talk for people destroying our land. Is that personal? I cry for this nation. And this is what the presidency is saying. This is what the presidency is saying. And this Nana Akufuado government has always been like that. We remember the last elections, the by-elections that happened just here. What happened? MPs were slapped, guns were fired, and when the report finally came, after spending so much money on a setting sitting, a committee sitting, we took so many dates, 
spent Ghanaian's money there, they came and rubbish the report using upon Kruma. Today they are rubbishing the professor's things. I wish there was something I could do about this. These are the reasons some African countries become so lawless. Because the people we vote into power are all of a sudden becoming demons. And the best way to deal with a demon is to send them to hell. My name is Black Rasta. Thank you so much. I do appreciate you and I love you for coming along with me on this very precious journey of Pan-Africanism and consciousness. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku. Show them where we speak truth to power. And remember, nobody is bigger than the truth. And we are ably supported by Is It. Now with Is It, if you're tired of social media's negativity, all the nudity, all the nakedness, all the violence, all the racism, then Is It is your app. Oh, you can go live. You can also oh upload your videos. You can also upload your stories and photographs and get to meet people of like minds, promote your business, and be on the same pedestal with positive thinking people. Download this app from App Store and Google Play for free. I am on Is It, and I need you to be there so that we can hang up and feel good. And this is the app that you can entrust to your children because there's no negativity in there. We have powerful algorithms that sap out all negative things before they even come up. And the way we do it, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. I do not know that, but I know that it works. Get that from App Store and from Google Play, and everything is okay. It's easy. Thanks so much for, you know, supporting us. Also support us. Yes, pick up our numbers running on the screens. And of course, when you talk to us, we'll do business together. Support us. Our numbers are running on the screen. But we are also on YouTube. We need you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also click on the notification button so that you can be notified every time we come on. My name is Black Preston. I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shodomo, where we speak truth to power. Hi! Hey! Why <laughs>